Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. Am I the only one who sees the irony in the NFL's biggest head case turning a helmet preference into the biggest story in the league, Perna? I will update you on the continuing AB helmet saga at the end of this episode and do my best to focus on more important head-related news, like Paxton Lynch being lucky he still fucking has one after this hit in a game that doesn't matter. Today, I have a lot to catch you up on in terms of NFL news. I found a stat that everyone but Titans fans will love. The return of Josh Gordon and Josh McCown making Josh the number one name for dads to name their boys if they want their sons to have very bizarre NFL career paths. And the roster problems, the Chargers are already facing, and more stuff. More stuff than that. That's good sports. Good news, I have added the Browns to the 8-bit helmet t-shirt collection, link in the description, more designs coming later this week. Also, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Hair, beard, chest, back, balls, feet. Hair, beard, chest, back, balls, feet. Hair, beard, chest, back, balls, feet. Science lab? It doesn't matter where you shave, it matters how you shave. The number one place for total body maintenance is manscaped.com. As a man with the ability to grow hair on any part of my body that's thicker than the jungles in the Amazon basin, I have put the lawnmower 2.0 through the ringer. It is my favorite manscaping tool and I recommend you try the perfect package 2.0 plus peak hygiene plan. It comes with the lawnmower, the plow, the crop preserver, the crop reviver, the pube mat, and a free travel storage bag and a replacement blade for your lawnmower every three months for just $14.99. If you're already manscaping, definitely check out their new replenishment plans where you choose the frequency of delivery so you never run out of your favorite product. Use my promo code GOODSPORTS or the link in the description to save 20% off your manscaped order. As I briefly mentioned, Paxton Lynch nearly had his head removed in the Vikings-Seahawks game. I know this is an unpopular rule with fans, but I completely agree with the NFL that decapitation should be 100% illegal in the game. Some of you may call me a libtard or a social justice warrior, but I think players should be able to keep their heads attached to their bodies, and nothing will change my mind about that. The hit was delivered by Holton Hill for the Vikings, who was ejected for the hit, adding to the fact that he is set to serve an eight-game suspension this season, four for PEDs, and four for violating the NFL's substance abuse policy, which is far more harsh than the NFL's Paxton Lynch abuse policy. Paxton will undergo testing today to determine if his brain still understands that he is in fact a human being. Right now, doctors are mostly concerned that Paxton might forget that he learned how to play NFL level quarterback this preseason. Over the weekend, while you were all enjoying your life, I was doing research and I stumbled upon a stat, a stat of a lifetime. And it's, it's like the DP show's stat of the day, but called lifetime, so I don't get sued, but also because you will remember it for the rest of your life. And I'm sorry, Titans fans, but right now Delaney Walker is the only pass catcher on the Titans roster with more TD catches than their head coach, Mike Vrabel who played defense in the NFL. Linebacker Mike Vrabel finished his career with 10 touchdowns as a situational gimmick tight end. Defenses always forgot to cover. Right now, the only Titans receiver close to that is Adam Humphreys heading into his fifth NFL season with nine NFL receiving touchdowns. Keeping with Titans news, assuming he stays healthy, Delaney Walker is one of the most reliable producers at the position in the game. And it sounds like he's more motivated than ever coming off an injury from last season. Uh, cuz man, they got dudes that ain't even played a snap in the NFL ranked higher than me and that's, that's just ridiculous. Been doing this for 14 years and the disrespect that's like someone coming in my face disrespecting me. That's like someone coming in my face. I agree, coming in someone's face just isn't disrespectful, it's... That's just ridiculous. Josh McCown has ended his retirement and signed a one-year deal with the Eagles, and now has played for roughly one-third of the NFL. 
The league office is currently reviewing whether or not Josh will be allowed to change his last name to Josh McHoare. Josh McTramp was already disapproved, but only because Roger Goodell feared it was too close to Josh McTrump. And with people already asking why Kaepernick didn't get a look from Philly, Goodell wanted to avoid the controversy. Eagles head coach Doug Peterson said the reason he likes Josh McCown is because he's 40, so he's close to my age. And it's always nice to have a guy on the roster who you can discuss your colonoscopy results with. The reason Philly needed a QB is because Nate Sudfeld broke his non-throwing wrist and Cody Kessler went out and got himself a concussion. And Nick Foles is obviously playing in Jacksonville. Now week one hasn't even started and the Chargers players are dropping like eggs in Philip Rivers' wife's uterus. <laughs> Is that crossing a line? Probably, but right now, the third most popular team in LA, the Raiders are still somehow more popular than uh, the Chargers in LA, who are dealing with some mounting personnel issues. Running back Melvin Gordon still holding out and is willing to miss games, just like most Chargers fans. Safety and defensive rookie of the year runner-up Derwin James fractured his fifth metatarsal, not to be confused with Adam Vinatieri's fifth metamucil, which he needs daily to keep his bowels regular. The fifth metatarsal is a bone on the outside of your foot, and there's no timetable for James' return. If he's lucky, and the Chargers are lucky, he could be back for the playoffs. Wide receiver Keenan Allen underwent ankle surgery, will miss the rest of the preseason, but should be back for the opener on September 8th. Left tackle Russell Okun is still on the non-football illness list after suffering a pulmonary embolism in June, which is a blood clot in the lungs. The Chargers are the only franchise that demand you have a fucking medical degree in order to understand any article written about the team right now. The NFL has reinstated wide receiver Josh Gordon, which led to the Patriots releasing wide receiver Dontrell Inman as per requested by Inman after learning Josh Gordon would be coming back. And as much as he is a Patriot, I am glad that Josh Gordon is back after what's been a difficult road. Things would have been so much easier for him had he hit his child instead of a pipe. Browns receiver Odell Beckham Jr. was blowing up all over Twitter today for making this between the legs catch thrown so he can make a between the legs catch during warmups at Brown's practice. First of all, he didn't even keep both feet in bounds. Second of all, when you have man sized hands, one handed grabs are easy. Finally, I am really jealous. I'm just jealous that Odell can get so much positive attention for doing something that comes so easy to him. That would be like me getting a million RTs for a video showing everyone that I could masturbate like this if I wanted to. Sure, the haters will say do that during a game when it matters, but most people without an agenda would be like, that's pretty impressive. Unlike OBJ, you know who doesn't try to be cute during the preseason? Bill Belichick. Obviously, he's never tried to be cute, but he's already dismantling sideline reporters like it's the playoffs. I do want to bring up Josh Gordon because you put out a statement earlier today. Anything you'd like to add to that? Nope. Not at all? No, that's why I put out the statement. Okay, all right. Do I have anything to add to that? Uh, I'm glad you asked. The answer is no, go fuck yourself. No, that's why I put out the statement. Okay, all right. In really sad NFL news, former Bears and Bengals running back Cedric Benson died in a motorcycle crash over the weekend. A female passenger who was on the bike also died in the crash. Cedric Benson was the fourth overall pick back in 2005 and was part of the Bears team that went to the Super Bowl that season. He never quite lived up to expectations in Chicago, but had a resurgence in Cincinnati, uh, which included a 189-yard game against his former team. The Pittsburgh Steelers uh, also revealed that Daryl Drake stickers will be worn on their helmets this season. Daryl Drake was the Steelers wide receiver coach who passed away last Sunday after experiencing chest pains the day before. Now in an attempt to transition from very, very sad news, I will do my best to just make you flat out angry. NFL officiating in real preseason form is giving us a sour taste, a sour taste to be expected to follow into the season. There has been a rule change this offseason about blindside blocks, where a blindside block can now be called if it is not a blindside block. 
Blindside blocks now include blocking a guy who looks directly at you before you block him. The best part is I'm not even sure what's gonna be worse, that bullshit or the ability to challenge pass interference calls knowing that even with the replay, the refs will still get the call wrong. Washington was flagged for offensive pass interference here and when Jay Gruden challenged the obvious mistake, it was upheld. The terrible call, fortunately, was saved by Joe Theismann's reaction. Pass interference, offense number 13, Daniel Shenelby. Two weeks into the preseason, and we already know that it was ridiculous to ever challenge judgment calls. Daniel Shenelby. The guys who initially made the call are reviewing it, so of course they're going to err on the side of what they called the first time. Mr. Perna, it looks like you might have driven through that mailbox while speeding in a residential neighborhood. Do you want to take another look and decide whether or not you should give yourself a ticket? The answer will always be in my self-interest. But Joe Theismann's reaction does give me an idea on how to fix the replay. One ref should always just be listening to the announcers. That should be his only job. So if he hears a guy who used to play in the NFL react like this. How can, how? I'm sorry, how is that pass interference when he's coming back to try and make a play on the ball? He knows immediately his crew messed up. Now Lions fans should be very concerned that Matt Patricia heading into his second season doesn't have a clue as to where he should be standing on the sideline. If his goal is to be the world's best Gatorade bartender, I think he has a shot. Ryan Fitzpatrick proved birthday cake is the new creatine for NFL quarterbacks when he trucked Bucks defender and former Broncos safety Darian Stewart. D. Stu is a pretty ferocious hitter, so this is impressive. Almost as impressive as the PFT commenter's caption on that tweet. That is one I am truly jealous of. That's why I don't make the big bucks. Here's a photo of Ricky Williams signing a Dolphins 420 jersey with his signature, and then the line, puff, puff, run, and then writing, smoke weed every day. A message for every child out there aspiring to blow up his NFL career for weed. I forgot I wasn't supposed to get high is the best defense an NFL running back has had since a glove not fitting. And here we are, the final chapter in the AB helmet saga. I thought. I thought that chapter had passed. Antonio Brown left Raiders training camp again over this shit. And I'm actually starting to feel bad for Mike Mayock. He's upset about the helmet issue. Uh, we have supported that, we appreciate that. Okay, but we've, at this point, we've pretty much exhausted all avenues of relief. So from our perspective, it's time for him to be all in we're all out. Here's my theory though. AB is in cahoots with HBO to make a compelling storyline this season. Not for money though, but so the channel gets rebranded as ABO. And we get new shows like Sex with the Goalpost in the City, Big Little Chests, and Deadwood. The HBO drama about how Antonio Brown used wooden furniture as a weapon. Tom Brady was also reluctant to change his helmet, but made the adjustment. Because at the end of the day, getting used to a new helmet takes until about the end of the day. I never thought I would say this, but I wish Tom Brady would deflate some fucking footballs so I wouldn't have to keep following this helmet news. I can report ABO will be airing Spaceballs every day per Antonio Brown's direction. Oh, your helmet is so big. And that is as much NFL news as I can fit into one episode and still expect you to watch. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports here on YouTube. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Perna. If you want to talk football crap to me there, feel free to do so. Also, follow at WillKey6. He helps me write football videos here on YouTube. And he's a nice guy. Most of the time. What a mysterious plug for Will, huh?